What's up you guys, it's Adrian here. So a while ago I did a video about different MBA specializations and which ones are currently most in demand. You can watch the video by clicking here. And some people reached out to me and asked if I can do a video about the leading business schools and what they're actually known for. So I thought to myself, no problem, and here we go. If you have done your research and checked business school websites and business school rankings to compare MBA programs, by now you must have identified the characteristics for each school that really motivate you to apply. But maybe you don't know what each school is mostly known for, or maybe you already found out about that and you just want to get a second opinion to confirm your findings. Let's start with the world's most famous business school, the Harvard Business School, aka HBS, which has a brand like no other business school in the world. HBS has produced a staggering number of Fortune 500 CEOs and billionaires and has overall a global network that is second to none. Harvard Business School can claim academic excellence in so many fields but a lot of rankings say its clear strength is general management as it clearly focuses on the case study method. By the way, if you want to know more about teaching methods, click here. But if you take a look into their employment report, you can see that financial services is the main sector with over 30%, followed by consulting with over 20%. So over 50% of the class ends up in one of those industries. If you want to end up at McKinsey, BCG or Bain, or at any of the top tier investment banks, your chances are very, very high that you will end up there. HBS carries so much weight because all firms know how tough it is to get into the program. So there was already a pretty intense selection process beforehand. Also, because it's prestigious brand, you can really end up in almost any industry you can possibly think of. It doesn't necessarily have to be finance or consulting. Stanford Graduate School of Business is the most selective business school in the world. It has maintained the highest ratio of applicants to available seats among US programs for the last decade. Normally around 7,000 people apply and around 420 people make it into the program. This means a great number of people who apply don't make the cut. The MBA class size at Stanford GSB is relatively small and actually less than half of Harvard's. Stanford is close to Silicon Valley and because of that a growing number of applicants are choosing Stanford over HBS. Stanford is especially known for producing entrepreneurs and graduates who end up being very successful at tech firms and startups. More than a quarter of the class normally takes a position in the tech sector and it has a long-standing reputation in this industry. So Stanford is synonymous with technology and even though Stanford isn't necessarily known as a finance school, along the lines of Wharton or Columbia, it still sends a high number of graduates into private equity and venture capital. Then there is the Wharton School of Business in Pennsylvania. A place in Wharton's incoming class is more competitive than ever. Just like HBS, the school is pretty famous for all business disciplines, but it's certainly most famous for finance, finance, finance. The school sends well over 30% of the class into financial services in some capacity. For that reason, Wharton is very strong in sending graduates in private equity and venture capital. Only Stanford and Harvard send a larger percentage of students in these industries, but since Wharton's class is significantly larger than Stanford's, you'll find several Wharton grads at most private equity and venture capital firms. So those are the top three US schools, Harvard, Stanford, Wharton. Let's quickly talk about some leading European schools before I talk about the other US schools. INSEAD describes itself as the business school for the world. And I think they can truly claim that since over 80 nationalities are represented in its program. And with that, it's probably the most international program out there. Also, it pioneered the one-year MBA and it is now the world's largest MBA program with around 1,000 students. INSEAD has two batches of classes. One starts in January and the other one in September. And there are two campuses, one in Fontainebleau, which is a small town around 50 miles from Paris and in Singapore. The school is probably most known for being a top feeder for the consulting industry 
with close to 50% ending up in consulting roles. Finance and tech are other leading destinations for graduates. From the conversations I've had with current students and graduates, I've learned that INSEAD prepares you very well for the management consulting industry, whether in class or through their consulting club. Then there is the London School of Business or LBS, not to be confused with the London School of Economics or LSE. Just like Harvard, Stanford, Wharton and INSEAD, LBS is consistently ranked among the top 10 business schools in the world. LBS is famous for producing graduates that enter the management consulting, finance and technology sectors. And since London is Europe's financial capital and all major banks and financial players are based or have an office in London, it's got very strong ties to the financial industry with access to leading investment banks and private equity firms. So if you are dead set on banking in Europe, you will have very high chances of ending up in that line of business after graduation. Yes, a business school is where I got my MBA from and where I spent most of my MBA journey. It is known for its international outlook and for its case-based teaching method. It's got strong ties to Harvard Business School and is actually its sister school. That's why it is considered the European Harvard Business School. A huge chunk of people end up in management consulting and at large corporates. And it's definitely less of a finance school such as LBS. Because it's a very strong European school, its network is in Europe. So if you're looking to find a job outside of Europe, it can be tough. The brand is not so much known outside of Europe, I would say. So those were the top three US and European schools. Now let me talk about the rest of the top 20 US schools. The University of Chicago Booth School of Business is well known for being a finance and economics powerhouse. Chicago Booth is and has always been known as a finance school. However, just like the other schools I've mentioned, it has pretty much representation in all industries. So a Chicago Booth degree will serve you well in any kind of industry. And I would say that's by far the strongest MBA business school in the Midwest. So if your end goal is to end up working in the Midwest, Booth is your best shot. The school is very well connected to all major companies and its reputation in that area is second to none. Located in New York City, Columbia Business School is at the center of business. Given the school's location, it's no surprise that Columbia sends a large number of students into finance. And it just makes sense. Being in New York City attracts a lot of real world practitioners as faculty in the business school. Investment banking remains Columbia's largest placement in the finance industry, but the school also places students in areas such as hedge fund management, investment management and private equity and venture capital. Another strong area for Columbia is real estate. And while the figure is low, it is still triple most business schools. Consumer goods and luxury retail, along with media and entertainment, are other industries the school is particularly strong for. MIT Sloan's MBA program is known as a highly quantitative program. Around 45% of students come armed with a degree in engineering, science, math or computer science. Several well-known financial and managerial theories were developed through MIT Sloan and there is a strong analytical and data-driven focus. The school sends a lot of graduates into consulting and tech with around 30% each. The Kellogg School of Management is part of Northwestern University and it's known for producing consultants and marketers. In fact, over 30% of the graduates end up in consulting and it's less known for being a finance school. Unlike NYU Stern, which is the business school of Wall Street, though its main campus is now in Greenwich Village, home to Silicon Alley with the second highest concentration of internet startups in the US after Silicon Valley. Stern also has strong ties with the fashion industry, luxury brands and the world of entertainment and media. Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley is located near Silicon Valley and it is no surprise that technology companies dominate the top recruiter list ranging from tech firms like Amazon to Apple. Be aware, however, that Berkeley Haas graduates tend to gravitate towards marketing and product management roles, 
whereas at Berkeley's rival school Stanford, there is a stronger pipeline into technology venture capital firms. Other focus industries are digital media, energy and sustainability and entrepreneurship, and there is less emphasis on finance. Actually, one of the lowest proportions of any top tier MBA program. UCLA Anderson is the leading business school in Los Angeles and it has excellent placement in the LA offices of McKinsey, BCG and Bain as well as top investment banks. The LA location also has an advantage if you're considering a career in tech post MBA. LA ranks number three in the tech job market in the US after the San Francisco Bay Area and New York City and this advantage is visible from the 30% placement of graduates into the tech industry. The Darden Graduate School of Business at University of Virginia, just like HBS, uses a case method teaching approach and frequently wins high ratings for professor and teaching quality in publications. This helps the school to place graduates successfully in fields that appreciate the case method, including management consulting and to some extent investment banking. Consulting and financial services are the main industries graduates end up with, followed by consumer industries and tech. Tepper School of Business at Carnegie Mellon is one of the smallest among the top 20 business schools. The school is the pioneer of analytical decision making. Their management science approach truly plays to their strengths and reputation. With that in mind, Tepper places a lot of graduates in financial services and tech, followed by consulting. Cornell Johnson puts a premium on small class size, engaged professors and its close-knit community. The school is known for its strengths in entrepreneurship, consulting, technology and investment banking and asset management. In fact, the school has an investment banking immersion, as they call it. And from what I've heard, it must be a superb learning experience. Duke Fuqua's MBA program is part of the world-renowned Research Triangle Park, one of the oldest and largest science parks in the US, with over 200 companies ranging from startups to multinationals. This proximity to innovation has also driven Fuqua to be a pioneer in offering STEM-certified programs. The Ross MBA is rooted in action-based learning with a guiding mantra, learning business by doing business. Ross is well known for its close-knit, team-oriented community and its strong social innovation and impact initiatives. It's a major hub for finance and consulting in the Midwest. A top factor when considering University of Southern California's Marshall School of Business, or also known as USC, is a large network that comes along with its program. You will find great support through the USC alumni network as part of what is known as the Trojan family. This strong network is especially present in LA and can be a useful tool while job searching. The top industries students end up with are tech and financial services, followed by consulting and media and entertainment. The Tuck School holds the distinguished title of first graduate school of management in the world. It was founded in 1900 and the school was quite literally the blueprint for every business school that followed and remains solidly in the top tier today. Tuck is a top feeder school for industries such as consulting and finance, but also places very well at large corporates for various functions which says a lot since these companies must all make the rather inconvenient trip to chat with students. Just like Cornell, it's in the middle of nowhere. And if you wanna know where the school is and you're interested in applying, better check the location first. The real estate program in Cannon Flagler Business School at the University of North Carolina or UNC is truly top notch. If you're interested in real estate programs, you owe it to yourself to look into what UNC Kenneth Flagler has to offer in this regard. They currently place around 12% of their students in real estate, which is the highest rate of any major MBA program. In addition to real estate, Kenneth Flagler also has great placement in investment banking in both the regional center of Charlotte and in New York. Known as the Harvard of Texas, UT Austin is a world-class public university with strengths in technology and entrepreneurship. 
The business school leverages its Austin location, a city increasingly known for being a technology center with an increasing number of ex-Silicon Valley transplants. MBA grads successfully find career opportunities throughout Texas within all top industries like tech, consulting and investment banking. Yale School of Management is widely known as the number one MBA program for nonprofit in the world, but the school has plenty of strengths beyond the sector. In fact, more than 90% of students take a job in the private sector. The business school also benefits from strong connections with Yale University within an international network and brand recognition rivaled by only a handful of institutions on earth. And because of that, Yale SOM can place you in literally every industry, whether it's finance, consulting, marketing or operations. As a final note, I just want to say that regardless the choice of school, you can still make it to any dream employer of yours. If you want to end up in consulting or banking, it really doesn't matter if you go to HBS or Darden or any other school. All top 20 schools offer the same opportunities for the most part. It's just that some schools have a slightly better access to certain industries and locations. And always remember, hiring takes place locally. If you want to end up on the West Coast, your best bet is a West Coast school. You can still make it to Silicon Valley with an East Coast school, but it will be way easier for you to recruit when you're already physically there where you want to end up working after your NBA. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And on your way down there, please leave a like and a comment for the almighty YouTube algorithm. Hope to see you guys again, take care and stay safe.